There is a foundational error that a lot of solopreneurs make when they try to build a business of their dreams, a livelihood that they can really feel is authentic to them. And this is the error. They think they need to define themselves and present themselves to the world with a polished presence before they then get plenty of clients. And I have seen, I've been around coaching solopreneurs like this since 2009, and I've noticed this error year after year after year in all these people that I'm meeting who, who need help. And so hopefully this video will serve as a bit of um, something I can send to, to everyone that I'm seeing is, is struggling with this, which is there is this, this illusion that there is a right way to define yourself, to find your specialty, to find your niche or the place that you can really thrive before you then get out there and get clients, create content, all that stuff. And what I have noticed, uh, and let me know if you agree with me, is that society is moving so fast and you are evolving so quickly that any definition you give of yourself is going to feel stale sooner than you think. Before, before your website is done, you already feel like, oh, I've already moved beyond this. You know, before your, you know, you built your thousand social media followers on a particular topic, you've already moved beyond it. So this is where I wish I could tell this to everyone that instead of trying to define yourself before you build a business, you actually do it the other way around. You build a business before you define yourself. You grow an audience before you clarify your message. You talk to people before you understand what you can help them with. This is actually how authentic evolution of your understanding of yourself works were you born and once you learn language you're like oh i know i know what i'm supposed to do for the rest of my life no you are just, uh, just like me you know we're all still trying to figure it out and all we can do is step by step every day we try to help somebody else we make a comment here we create some content there Maybe we, maybe we do have a client or two or five or 10 that we're already serving, that we're trying to figure out how we can better help them. And the more we interact with the world, the more we understand, ah, this is what I like. This is what I'm good at. This is what I'm not good at. And these are the kinds of people I don't like to work with. Oh, this kind of person I really enjoy. How can you define your niche in the beginning of your business when you know, you, you haven't even interacted with the world about your possible offerings and your content yet. I don't get it. And I've been around as a business coach, entrepreneurial coach, marketing expert, quote unquote, since 2009. And I just, this has always baffled me. Like, how can you define your niche so early on? Well, you can, of course, because that's what a lot of the mainstream advice is. You know, I mean, when you 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 go on Wikipedia, how to start a business or whatever, like any mainstream advice, like first write a business plan. Who is your target market? You know, what is your offer for them? You know, what is uh, what is your business model going to be for them? Like you're supposed to define every well because the original traditional business plans were meant for people who are getting investments, and so they have to bring something to the bank or to the investor to be to be a peer, to be polished and, and defined so that the investor will give them money. But that's not, so, so like I said, a lot of that traditional advice is based on that kind of model. But we, most of us here are not trying to get investment into our business before we go out there and, and have a, you know, uh, go to market strategy or whatever. No, what we're trying to do is go, hmm, I have some, I have a skill, I have some skills, I'm sure, 
I'm not even sure what they are, but I know I have some skills, right? I have a passion or maybe several areas of interest. I have a heart for people um, and to use my life force and energy in a way that uplifts the world. I have that. And what I hope for is that people will decide that it's worth paying me and paying me well and that I can serve them and give them lots of value. That's what I know. We're not trying to get investment, right? And so what do we do? We put one step, one foot in front of the other and say, well, let me begin by talking to somebody, you know, starting with your friends and say, hmm, I've got these five different skills. I mean, I'm just going to brainstorm. Maybe you can brainstorm with me. What are my different skills that I could provide? Really, you know, don't, don't make assumptions. Just because you've already named yourself something, just because you already have a website, you've already called, you have a tagline already, you have something already. Maybe you still have defined yourself too early. Probably have. Though no, this is why I really, um, I mean, look, look at, I haven't changed my tagline, authentic business coach, for all these years. I honestly don't even like it. I mean, I came up with it was kind of clever in the beginning, like ABC, authentic business coach, but I honestly haven't resonated with my tagline for. Ever since like maybe month two, after, I mean, I, I defined it maybe in, I don't know, 2015, just putting something out there. I don't care. I just wanted, I had to create a Facebook page. I put something out there and like, but, but then I've just, you know, and then yes, I've, I've talked about authentic business. I don't really even love that term to be honest with you, but I just try to help people and I come up with courses that, so here's, here's what, where I think niching, where I think uh, defining oneself makes more sense is experimental offers you can niche yourself down so here's the here's the kicker here all right here's the punchline niche your offers don't niche yourself ever until until one day it becomes so obvious to you what you want to do for the rest of your life or at least for the next 10 years or five years then okay you can niche yourself and call yourself something and Ideally, that's the state. Now, if you've already called yourself something like I have, just leave it. Just leave it. Don't, don't worry about it so much. Just niche your offers. Sure, you could try out different things, but don't niche yourself because you are more creative and multi-potential than that, than, than a single tagline or niche that you can give yourself. But George, how do I introduce myself on a call? Say something different every day. Really? I mean, but then they'll think I'm crazy. They'll think you're interesting. Who's going to think you're crazy? Who, 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 who's going to think, who's going who's gonna to think less of you? They're not for you. The people who are judging you, you have to get this through to your head. They're not for you. The people who are judging you are not for you. The people who find you interesting because you're saying something different every day, there's an energy signature match where they're like, wow, I'm going to follow this person's journey. They're so interesting. They're not boring. They're not always about one thing only. You know, it's like so many of us are so afraid of being judged. Who is, who is judging us? I'm really curious. Like, who, Who's in your head judging you? Who's, which friend, which you know, family member, which colleague is judging you? They're not your ideal client. They're not your ideal referral source. There's so many people out there. You have to get out there and, and create in a diverse way whatever is interesting for you. You create in that diverse way. So here's the, here's the alternate path that I wish every young person and old person alike knows about. The, diver the, the alternate path is this, and I, I, have, I have some notes for myself. I'm going to look at this. You first brainstorm or, or search a little bit within yourself on what excites you, what brings you energy. Look out into the world and see what you love talking about and what you love, um, you know, helping to contribute to that field or that, that uh, problem to help solve that problem or to help humanity have more of those experiences. Okay. A little bit of, a little bit of self-reflection or if you, uh, if it's more helpful to talk with a friend or a coach who is who who allows you to be flexible who's not going to make you define yourself in in session 2 or even session 20 but who allows you to say let's not define yourself so quickly 
Let's allow yourself to tap into your potential, to allow that instead of going, well, I'm this, so therefore that must not be for me. Why? Why are you defining yourself so quickly? Well, George, I'm 67 years old. Great. You have Maybe you have another 20 good years of passionate, enjoyable work ahead of you. George, I'm 75. Well, maybe, maybe you also have another 20 years, right? <laughs> ahead of you of good, passionate, enjoyable, fulfilling work. Never too old to explore, to find again. Be, again, because why? Well, because you never allowed yourself to explore, probably. You had somebody tell you you had to define yourself quickly and you got locked in that that's me. No, it's not. No, it's not. You have so, you're so much greater than this. So work with somebody who believes in you to allow yourself to explore. If, that's it, if you can hire a coach for that, that would be great because then they're accountable to you to help you explore and allow yourself to give yourself that permission to really explore widely and to test widely and to, ex to observe the test. A coach is very useful, uh, can be very useful for this because they, again, they give you more of a discipline of exploration and then analysis and they keep you accountable to, to doing that. If you don't have a coach, can't afford one, talk with a friend, get together with someone, send a friend a trusted colleague or friend this video and you can explore together get together on a regular basis help each other explore what is possible right that's just just to speak just to begin that exploration step one don't 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 spend too long you know don't you know you, you should spend no more than one month just just talking and exploring internally keep doing it for the rest of your life but make sure you move to the next step the next step is to create and publish your explorations, to be willing to publicly journal your explorations. Where, where, where do you do it? Where, where do I do it, George? Facebook profile, where your friends are, ignoring whoever family member or friend or colleague is shaking their finger at you. Why are you so flaky? Why are you trying this and that on this today? You're talking about this tomorrow. You're talking about that. Oh, great. Yeah. Th thank you. <laughs> thank you, you know, dear aunt, dear friend, dear colleague, dear classmate, dear neighbor, dear whatever person you knew 10 years ago. Thank you. Uh, apparently, you don't understand entrepreneurship. I, you know, I'm sorry you don't understand it. You don't have to tell them that, but that's what you can think. Of. They don't understand entrepreneurship. True entrepreneurship is exploration. True entrepreneurship is the opening, the flowering of your potential in service to the world, of course to add value to the world. But true entrepreneurship is not, ooh, let me define myself quickly because I'm scared that people aren't going to pay attention to me if I don't have a really clear niche, a clear tagline, a clear blah, 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 blah. No, that's not, that's not true entrepreneurship. And that's not that, in, in that you're, you're, you're um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You are preventing your potential. You're stymieing it. You are um, stunting your growth with, with that kind of thinking. So step one, allow yourself to explore. Hopefully work with somebody, a friend, a coach if you can. And then step two, as quickly as you can, create and place those explorations out there. If you don't know where, put it on your Facebook profile. You know, put, put it, you know, friends only, pr pr privacy if you prefer that. Or create a, create a little Facebook group. Create a little Facebook group with you and your coach and maybe two or three other supportive friends who maybe also want to explore. Maybe, maybe three of your friends want to hire a coach or four of your friends want to get together, hire a coach for a little tiny group program where you all, you're all exploring together. That's a great idea, by the way, right? If you're, if you're a coach and willing to do that with, with uh, three or four people paying you, please comment below. So, so you, you immediately start to create as soon as possible. You start to create and put things out there. If you're shy, do it in a tiny group of supportive people, allowing you to explore and, and cheering you on in your explorations. Create content on these different interests because why? You need to feel that content come through you and see if you want to do more of it. Like you, you'll never know and, until you, you, you feel that coming through you, whether you're making videos or you're writing on a topic or you're recording a podcast or you're creating some images or whatever it may be, you, 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 whatever interest, you let that come through you in exploration so that 
you can see how that feels like in firsthand you because you'll never know you don't want to you don't want to die without having explored that aspect of you, right? And to do it, again, publicly, at least in a small supportive group of people, if not, if you're willing to do it publicly on social media, go for it, because then you're, you're even speeding the process up even more. But so we are exploring with our content in service to our audience. So that's the other side of it. So content creation is this Venn diagram of exploring oneself and one's possibilities and potential in in service so there's that sweet spot in the middle you can always explore yourself but sometimes that's just private journaling exploring yourself or talking privately with a coach or a friend that's fine but if you can do it publicly or at least in a small group that you're doing it in service or public public journal you're doing it in part like part of this is you exploring yourself a part of this is also wondering i wonder if this exploration serves somebody who is seeing this serves somebody who's reading this or listening to this or enjoying this piece of content they may may or may not enjoy it i wonder i wonder if this is helpful to them in some way maybe i'm giving them some words for for an exploration that interesting for them too so that's that's the next step you, you know you you create publicly as much as possible with explore with the heart of exploration and and also a spirit of service to those who are seeing it and by doing so, you find your you find your voice more and more. You discover your true interests more and more, and you also discover what of your interests are also fascinating for people as you explore publicly. This is how we actually discover our niche. Now, now that's that's just the next. So, we, first step was. You know, start the exploration, maybe with a coach, maybe with a friend. At least you can start to try try out some wild ideas. And then as soon as you can, start to post the ex explorations publicly with an experimental mindset. I'm just exploring and I'm going to see which of my explorations happens to uh, delight, uplift, help, serve in some way those who are seeing it. And then the next step is once you have built some interest in any of those interests, and, and you know, let's say you've explored on three different topics, five, seven, 12, 15 different topics and over the course of several months. And you notice, oh, wow. When I explore on topic three and topic seven and topic 12, they tend to get the most engagement on, 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 on those when I talk about those things or when I explore that side of my interest, that gets the most engagement. Oh, that's, that's cool. And I enjoy it too. Okay, good. Then the next step is you create a light offer based on that air, those areas of interest. Again, do it one at a time, maybe do it once a month, one, one per month. You create an offer to, and, and you, you ask your audience, what do you think about this? If not, what else could I offer in this area that you think would sell? You think people would be eager to, 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 to get the service or, or get the product? So in other words, you create a fan-based offering. You create an offer based on in interaction with your fans, with your, the fans of your explorations. And then the next step, you deliver that offer. Whatever people, you know, maybe maybe the first offer, people go, yeah, you know, it's not quite right. I don't think I'd buy it. I don't think people would buy it, you know. And then you, 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 keep, you, you test and create until you find one. People go, yes, that one. That one I'm interested in, in signing up for, or that one I know somebody, I, I think I could refer you to two of my friends who probably would be interested in this. So then you do, then you serve them. You serve those people with that offer. It's Maybe it's a low cost at the beginning, or maybe it's even limited time for free at the beginning. You're trying a, a few sessions out or whatever, but it's something that you actually want to serve them. They, they're actually signing up for something and then you're delivering it to them. It's a beta test. Right. But it is a real test based on having had some explorations that have already touched your audience. OK, so, so you, you, you serve them with that offer and then you keep and then after you serve them, you have your first real inkling of what your niche is. You see, you've done all this to get the real first inkling. Oh, wow. I, I, I've, I've created content in these different areas. They seem to like this area a lot. I've tested different offers. They seem to like that offer. 
I've served them. I enjoy serving them. They got benefit from it. Now I'm getting the first inkling of what my niche could be. You see, now the cycle begins again. You then go back and go, great, let me continue creating content. Now that I have, I really enjoy in this area of service, maybe I'll create more content in this, around this area. I'll, I'll weigh more of my content options around this area, but I'll still keep exploring sometimes. And then you post content, post content, post content. You create another fan-based offering. You serve them again, and then your niche gets even clearer. And this cycle done again and again is really what helps you discover your calling. This is how an authentic business is born. Not by defining yourself in the beginning when you don't even have an audience, you don't even have people for whom is going to give you any opinions. And you, you don't have, you haven't you explored different areas coming through you to see what it feels like. Go through the cycle that I just said and I promise you, you will be much more in tune with your real potential. I hope this is helpful. I hope this inspires you to explore more. Whatever stage you're at, even if you're quite an advanced stage, take what I just said and apply it in some way so you're opening yourself to more exploration. So thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing your comments below.